Well, praise the Lord. Let's have church tonight, folk. We had church last night. It was a blessing, boy. We had a good time last night. Appreciate the good message Brother Jeremy brought. And he's done a good job with that, and he always does. And appreciate him making his way back tonight. And giving him a safe trip. And I told the men back in the prayer, we've got to pray for the men of God. The devil would kill him if he could. And uh, Brother Jeremy had some bad instances last night, even after he come and preached like he did last night. And preached his heart out, and that's the way the devil works. Not time to shout yet, Jackson. I ain't said nothing to shout over yet. But last night, Brother Jeremy, uh, someone stole their van out of their yard. And uh, they found it, but it wasn't in too good a shape when they found it. They would stripped it out. So uh, just pray for that situation to work out. Hey, God has a way to replace those things. Amen. Hallelujah. He might get him a, get him a, a one a lot better. Lord, hey, the Lord deals in better things. He deals in bigger things. We don't serve a God that's in a box. But we serve a God that de deals in bigger and better things. Amen. Well, we got some folk that are sick. We'd like for you to pray for them. Toots is sick. Frankie Stevens is sick. And I have a friend that we went to church with at Carolina Baptist, uh, Brother Wayne Coleman. Some of you uh, would know him. Uh, he had to have a foot amputated. Uh, evidently, it must have been the day. And uh, pray for him that... They won't have to, someone said they might even have to go up further than his foot. So let's pray that won't happen. He's a pretty good sized fella and it's probably going to immobilize him for a good bit. But just pray for him if you would, please, and pray he'll recover quick and completely from that. And let's pray for the service tonight. Pray, Lord, just give us a good time. Let's stand if you would, please, and we'll get started. We got some specials tonight that we're looking forward to and hoping and praying the Lord would just bless us in a special way and meet every day according to his precious will. Amen. All right, let's ask the Lord's blessing tonight to be upon the service as we ask the Lord's blessing to be upon it. Brother uh, Buddy, if you'd pray for us, please. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for another opportunity to be in our house. Yes, we do. Father, we, thank thank you, Father Father. we come to worship today, and we ask you to help us empty ourselves of worldly concerns. Amen. We might be filled with thee and thy word this evening. Yes. Father, we just pray that thy spirit will lead and guide the service. Grant it, Jesus. The prayers and the songs and the preaching of thy word. Amen. Father, we've come for revival. <clears throat> yes, Lord, I pray, God, tonight that you'll send it our way. Father, I pray the hearts and lives of your people. For out thy love and thy peace upon those going through the storm. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Remain standing and turn your hymn books, please. Page 306. Page 306. I love Jesus tonight. I don't know about you. That's what we're going to sing. We'll sing the first, second, last verse. My Jesus, I love thee.
Thank you so much. You may be seated. Sister Patty's going to sing for us this evening. You pray for her as she's coming. Thank the Lord. He gave me a desire one day to tell people about him. I thank God for it. It's my desire to live for Jesus. It's my desire to live for Him. Though often I have failed and brought Him shame. desire to tell someone today someone who may have failed to see the way I too was once so lost, but I found my way to God. Oh, it's my desire to live for Him. If you could see where Jesus brought me from on where I am today then you know the reason why I love him so you can take this whole world is love and it's riches cause I don't need earth's fame or oh, it's my desire to live for him or oh, if you could see where Jesus brought me from on where I am today, then you'd know the reason why I love him so. You can take this whole world, this love and its riches, because I don't need Oh, it's my desire. Oh, it's my desire. Let it be your desire to live for Him. Oh, it's my desire. our goal tonight is to live for him we'll live our lives for him because he gave his for us amen and suffered and died on calvary for you and for me 
the least we can do is strive to live for him tonight. Amen. All right, we're going to have Brother Mike to sing for us again this evening. He's back with us, and preacher already said we was going to feed him tomorrow, so we got to work him now. Maybe we'll get up to that place. <laughs> Sing my song. Sounds just like the preacher. <laughs> my hope is in the Lord. They heard God say, Have you considered my servant Job? He's one who's faithful in all that he knows. Job lost his children, his land, and all his wealth. When he wouldn't curse God, that's when Job lost his health. His cries could be heard from the ashes where he lay. Through the tears of sorrow, Job had to say, My hope 
is in the Lord. I will trust in Him and Him alone. Though death knocks at my door, my hope is in the Lord. He sat in the chair as the doctor broke the news. Son, it could be a week, a month, or maybe two. I'm sorry to tell you, the cancer has spread. Death will find its way. Nothing we can do. There's nothing we can say. Then the young man raised his trembling hands as his eyes filled with tears. You could hear him softly say, through the pain, the fear. He said, Doc, my hope is in the Lord. I'm going to trust in Him and Him alone. Oh, death knocks at my door. My hope. And it seems there is no hope There's one thing I'm sure of There's one thing that I know Thank God I know My hope is in the Lord I'm gonna trust in Him and Him alone My hope is in, my hope is in, my hope is in the Lord. Amen. Well, thank God my hope's not in the White House. I don't care who's president. My hope's not in who's in the office, especially not the president. My hope's in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. And I'm glad he's still in charge. He's still under control. Everything goes by the way he directs it. What a blessing that is. Thank you, Brother Mike, for singing those songs for us tonight. Truly a blessing. Already good by being in the Lord's house. Let's have the ushers to come forward, receive our offering this evening, and as I said last night, the offering comes in this week. We go to Brother Jeremy. Brother Jeremy is in the need of a van or a few fenders or a few doors or a radio or something. <laughs> Amen. So uh, come on, Brother Jack. Let's help him. Brother, Brother Mike Boone's our other usher. He comes straight from work, and he don't feel comfortable coming up in his work clothes, so that's, that's all right. <laughs> Well, yeah, that might have something to do with it, too. They might uh, just think you're going by with a plate. That's a good thought. I tell you what, Brother Tony, I, I know you might be lined up to sing one night this week, but after we take the offering, I want you to sing uh, God Has a Cross. If you'll get that ready, Brother Dalton, we'll be ready for that. Let's pray and ask the Lord blessing to be upon the gift and the giver, and pray the Lord's will be done tonight. Brother Charles Owens, would you pray for the offering, please, in the service? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. 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 Granted our Father. Yes. Yes. Granted our Father. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Get you. 
tell them we got the jug offering up here, so let's take it up to you. victory Amen. and I'll never forget one time that I heard a, a well-known preacher that's on the radio say that he didn't like that song victory in Jesus I felt like stringing him through the radio <laughs> and I was at a singing one night uh, with a group that was singing and somebody in the congregation suggested that the group would sing that song How you doing there? Good to see you. Glad you made it so quick. <laughs> uh, and they requested the group to sing the song, It Is Well With My Soul. And there was a lady sitting in front of me. She said, I hate that song. Just out real loud. I sat behind her. I said, I love it. Sing it. I like this song that Tony's going to sing. I thank God for the cross. And for the difference it made in my life, the difference it made in your life. And down through the years, God saw the cross. Amen. On the way over here tonight, my wife looked at me and she said, have you been practicing your new song? And I said, well, I've been trying to, but every time I start singing it, I start hearing this one. So y'all been, y'all been talking. Uh, yeah, okay. You talked to him today and got me all worked up. So let's give this one a try. saw his wife sin in the garden in the distance God saw a cross when Cain killed his brother God was watching and God saw When Moses slew 
the Egyptian man in anger. God saw a cross, and when David chose Bathsheba over honor, God knew there had to be a cross. God saw a cross being raised on the horizon. God saw his son being slain for one and all. God saw his blood being shed for our redemption. For every fall, God saw a cross. When I was born, the world just saw a sinner. Oh, but thanks to Jesus, God saw a cross. And when I first rejected his great offer, I'm so thankful God still saw a cross. With each wicked choice, I walked in darkness. My God saw a cross so blinded by my sin my soul was helpless with eyes of mercy God still saw a cross God saw a cross being raised on the horizon God saw his son being slain for one and all. God saw his blood being shed for our redemption. For every fall, God saw a cross. And when I finally gave my heart to Jesus, from that moment in time until forever when God sees me he only sees a cross God sees a cross being raised on the horizon God sees his son being slain for one and all. God sees his blood being shed for our redemption. For every fall, God sees the cross. God sees a cross. Thank you, Brother Tony. What a blessing that was. Come on, Brother Jeremy. You don't need any further introductions. Those of these people have heard you either in person or on the radio or something or otherwise. We're sure glad to have Brother Jeremy with us this week. Amen. You give him undivided attention, and I'll guarantee you he'll preach to you. Amen. Amen. You obey the Lord tonight. God bless you, brother. Jerry. Love you. Love you. Amen. Thank God it's good to be back tonight in the house of the Lord. I appreciate God's goodness unto us. Amen. And uh, as we seen last night, isn't he faithful? Yes. Yeah, Amen. That's exactly right. And uh, I, I, someone told me, said, boy, you sure must have made the devil mad. And uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I really don't. Uh, but uh, I do, one thing I do know, that, uh, that uh, God is faithful, and, uh, and He takes care of His children, and uh, He'll take care of us. Amen. 
no doubt in my mind about that. Uh, my wife woke me up about 6.30 this morning and uh, said, uh, said, the van is gone. <laughs> I said, where's it at? Uh, she said, I don't know. There's glass all over the driveway. And uh, someone had busted our window out and uh, had uh, taken our van. And uh, so we called the police. They found it, found it about 8.30 or so. And I said, wonderful. Uh, police officer said, well, he said, it's not that wonderful. <laughs> uh, they had taken uh, basically the whole front end off the car, uh, all the bumpers and all that stuff. But uh, uh, amen. <laughs> uh, somebody on eBay is going to find a, find a bumper for a 2013 Ford van. Amen. <laughs> I guess. Or a body shop. Anybody men here? Anybody work for a body shop here? Oh, no. Amen. <laughs> you didn't get any parts today, did you, brother? <laughs> Amen. All right. The book of Hebrews. I appreciate your prayers. So many uh, came in today, said they pray in force. And, and uh, some, some folks posted on Facebook as well. We sure appreciate that. Boy, I appreciate the goodness of God. I really do. I appreciate uh, the good liberty last night, my soul. Uh, there was great liberty in the house of God last night to preach the word, and I sure appreciate it. My heart has been blessed tonight already through the good singing. I appreciate uh, the good singing tonight. Every time we get to come to Emmanuel, I just enjoy it. I really do. I appreciate your pastor. Uh, he's my friend, and I thank God for him. Hebrew, back, let's turn back to the book of Hebrews tonight, chapter number 10. Hebrews chapter number 10. Hebrews chapter number 10. Amen. You glad you're saved tonight? Amen. 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 Let's stand our feet if it's where you're physically able. Hebrews chapter number 10. The Bible says in verse number 21 of Hebrews chapter number 10, And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching." Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you once again for this privilege to meet together with God's people. Lord, we appreciate so much the goodness of God to us. Thank you, Lord, for the good service last night. Lord, we realize that this is a new service. Lord, we need a fresh touch. Lord, we need you right now in this hour. Lord, I'm thankful that you are ever near. You are ever present. You are a very present help in the time of need, the time of trouble. And I bless your name for that. I thank you for this open door, this opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk. Lord, I do not take it lightly. And I realize this is an awesome responsibility. So Lord, I yield myself to you, afresh and anew tonight, knowing, Father, that without you, I can do nothing. So would you help your servant get Jeremy Chisholm out of the way. And I pray these people, this good congregation, Lord, would see Jesus Christ high and lifted up. Lord, you must increase and I must decrease. Father, I pray that you'd help us to do exactly what this text tells us to do. As we'll see tonight, let us draw near. Help us tonight, I pray. And we will give you the glory and all of the honor. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. As we begin last night, we laid out for you a brief outline of the book of Hebrews. I gave you some personal reasons why this book is so special to me. I, again, cannot open up the book of Hebrews without remembering that moment in the book, in the book of Hebrews class. They called it Analysis 3. There at Tabernacle Baptist Bible College is 
Dr. Russell Rice taught through the book of Hebrews. And I appreciate good godly memories, don't you? Amen. And that memory is etched in my mind. Amen. I'm thankful for it uh, because I get a blessing every time I open up uh, the book of Hebrews. But as I said last night, there's not another book in your Bible that exalts the Lord Jesus more than the book of Hebrews. We find the superiority of Jesus in the book of Hebrews. As the writer whom I believe is Paul, if you don't agree with me, that's okay. It really doesn't matter. Uh, but as the writer's writing to these Hebrew believers, he is encouraging them uh, to leave the ordinances and the ceremonies and the rituals of the law and uh, to, to grab a hold of Christ with everything that's within them. We understand, again, I personally believe that these are believers that he's writing to. He's not writing to lost people. He's writing to saved people. And they are being tempted to go back into Judaism. They are being tempted, if you will, to mix law with faith. And it's not just the Hebrew in the book of Hebrews. We find it as well in the book of Galatians. You remember Paul as he preached the gospel of the grace of God to those believers at Galatia. There were those who followed the apostle Paul. And you know what they said? Well, Paul's telling you the truth, but you need to add circumcision to salvation. In other words, they're saying it kind of like this. So make your salvation perfect, more complete, you need to be circumcised. They were adding, if you will, to the grace of God. And you know what Paul said about that? He said, it doesn't matter if it's me or if it's an angel from heaven. If they preach another gospel, which is not another, he said, let them be accursed. And that literally means anathema, cut off, sent to hell. That's pretty strong language, isn't it? Amen. And listen to me, I believe we still are seeing those who try to add to the grace of God. And here we find basically the crux of the book of Hebrews. Why would you want to add to what is superior? Why would you want to add to that which is perfect? May I say you cannot add to it. Amen. And you cannot take away from it. I love that term in John chapter number 19. In verse number 30 when Jesus lifted up His voice and cried, It is finished. Amen. They tell me that he is to tell us in the Greek and they tell me that it's an artist term that as the artist stood back and he put the last stroke upon that canvas upon that portrait that he was painting as he put the last stroke upon it brother Taylor he would say to tell us and you know what that means you can't add anything to it and you cannot take anything away from it amen it is done and it shall forever more be done. Well, thank God, amen, on the cross of Calvary, amen, Jesus Christ took the paintbrush of grace and stroked the canvas of mercy, amen, and said to tell us now, you cannot add anything to it, and you cannot take anything from it, amen. He's superior. He said he's superior to the prophets in chapter number one. Amen. He's superior to the angels in chapter 2. He's superior to Moses in chapter 3. He's superior to the Aaronic priesthood, uh, to Aaron in chapter number 4. He's superior to the Levitical priesthood in chapters 5 through chapter number 10. What is he saying? He's saying Jesus is better. Jesus is superior. Amen. And I want to say tonight, I believe it from the top of my head to the soul of my feet. He is God. He is perfect. And this salvation that He has given to us is complete. Amen. So based upon those thoughts, we find what we understand, what I'm calling the let us passages in the book of Hebrews. There are several of them. We looked at one last night in chapter 10 and verse number 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For He is faithful that promised. 
My, the Lord helped my soul last night. And I trust that He helped you as well. But tonight, with the help of the Lord, I want to back up one verse. And I want to deal with verse number 22 with the help of the Lord this evening. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. I want to deal with that thought, Brother Taylor. Let us draw near. And again, listen to me. It's based upon the reality of Jesus being superior. The reason, the very reason that He tells us to draw near is because Jesus is superior. It's because Jesus is better. It's because this salvation that we have is so wonderful and so complete. So therefore we find this exhortation. Let us us draw near. Let's deal with it tonight with the help of the Lord. First of all, I find the call. If you're taking notes tonight, I find firstly the call. Let us draw near. In dealing with this call, I want to deal, Brother Bunny, with the person to whom we are drawing near to. Notice he says, let us draw near. Now, it does not specifically say in the text that we are drawing near to Him, but it is implied. Who are we drawing near to? Who is He telling us to draw near to? Oh, you and I know from the context that He's talking about God. He's talking about the Lord. Amen. And the amazing reality is that these people that he's writing to, the Hebrews, were the only ones under the old economy who could draw near to God. Amen. Oh, listen, that's exactly right. In particular, it was only those of the household of Aaron that could really draw near. Only one time a year could they go into the Holy of Holies, that place where the Shekinah glory of God dwelt. Amen. And he writes to these Hebrew believers and says, let us draw near. Oh, isn't it a blessing, my friend, to understand this tonight? Uh, That the Hebrews or the Jewish nation certainly did have the blessing of the precepts that is the Word of God. Amen. They had the oracles of God given to them. They had the Scriptures given to them. And they were blessed in that regard. Listen, you and I tonight ought to thank God for the nation of Israel. Because it is through the nation of Israel you and I have the word of the living God. That's exactly right. And the Hebrews had the blessing of the precept. They had the blessing of the presence of God. God, especially in the wilderness, you remember, He led them by the pillar of fire by night and the cloudy pillar by day. They had the very presence of God drawing, uh, they had the very presence of God guiding them and directing them. Uh, But as far as really drawing near only one time a year, the great high high priest rather uh, could enter in into the Holy of Holies. Oh, and most certainly tonight the Gentile, the heathen, did not have that blessing. As a matter of fact, the Gentile didn't have the Word of God. Uh, The Gentile did not have the blessing of the presence of God leading them and directing them. And surely no Gentile had the privilege of ever walking into the Holy of Holies. Imagine if you will with me in the days of that Old Testament tabernacle, an Israelite and maybe maybe a Moabite sitting on the hill together. (laughs) Amen. You remember what God called Moab? He said Moab is my Wash pot. You remember that text over the book of Psalms? Amen. And imagine, if you will, just for a few moments for illustrative purposes, a Moabite and Israelite standing on the hill. That Moabite gets to talking that Israelite. He says, I see a strange tent down there in the wilderness. Could you tell me a little bit about it? That Israelite begins to say, oh yes. 
That's a place where we make sacrifices. That's a place where our sins are atoned. That Moabite gets intrigued. And he says, could you tell me a little bit more? Uh, And he says, well, uh, you see that white fence around that tabernacle? Uh, That white linen fence? You know, it represents the holiness of God. uh, The purity of God. You know what that white fence around the perimeter of that tabernacle saying? Stay out. Stay away. Amen. Stay out. Well, that, that intrigues that Moabite. He gets to saying, "Well, I, I see, I see some, I see some movement around that. What's going on down there?" We well, said, I, I, "There's a door there. There's a door, and at that door, there's a brazen altar." And on that brazen altar, brazen, that's brass. You know what brass speaks of in the Bible? It represents judgment. And at that brazen altar, there's a sacrifice to be made. Amen. And that Israelite said, listen, if you ever get through the door, amen, and pass that brazen altar where the sacrifice is made, you then would visit the, amen, the laver. The laver, amen. And that laver was for the priest how to wash himself, amen, so that he would be consecrated how to do the priestly work. And boy, that Moabite's really intrigued, amen. He says, I see, I see that brazen altar and I see that laver, but what is inside, amen, of that, that tabernacle, what we'd call the tabernacle proper? Well, that Israelites say, well, there's two compartments there. There is a holy place, And then there's a most holy place. Are you with me? There is a holy place. And then there is a holy of holies. Or there is a holiest of all. Well, that Moabite said, can you tell me about that holy place? And he said, yes, sir, I'd be glad to tell you. When you go in that holy place, there's a table of showbread there. Amen. And and if you look to your left, there's a golden candlestick. A golden candelabra. Seven candle, seven candle golden stick. And then there in front of you is an altar of incense. And in between that holy place and the most holy place, there's a veil. That Moabite said, what in the world is that veil there for? That veil is to separate. That veil is to say, keep out. Hello? That Moabite says, well, what's past that holy place? The Israelite said, I'm glad you asked. Because <laughs> beyond that veil, Brother Robert, there is the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> Amen. And there is what is called the mercy seat. And there are those cherubims upon that mercy seat. And that Moabite said, what's that? What's in that Ark of Covenant? And the Israelite said, I'm glad you asked. Inside that Ark of the Covenant, uh, there's three articles. Amen. Uh, there's Aaron's rod that budded. By the way, I feel like preaching just a little bit right there. You know what, what, the, you know what that was? Uh, Aaron's rod that budded. Uh, Aaron's rod was a dead stick. Amen. It was a lifeless stick. You know what it represents? It represents the humanity of Christ. Wood in the Bible speaks of humanity. And it speaks of His humanity. God became man. Oh, but listen. There it was. A lifeless stick. But God caused it to yield forth. Amen. Blossoms. And those blossoms yielded forth. Amen. Almonds. Amen. You know what it speaks of? It speaks of the resurrection. You see on the cross of Calvary. God died. God, amen. In the person of Jesus Christ. But three days later, thank God, He got up. He got up. He got up. Amen. Also in that Ark of the Covenant, there's another article. There is the golden pot of manna. Amen. Oh, yes, sir. And I can hear the Lord Jesus say in John chapter 6, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me, though he were hungry, amen, and though he thirsty, he shall never thirst, amen. Oh, yes, sir, he is that bread that came down from heaven. And also in that Ark of the Covenant, there was another article. There was a preserved copy of the Ten Commandments, amen. And you remember what happened to the first set, amen. You remember Moses threw them down 
down in his anger and they break. You know what that signified? That the very law that God was giving, man would break. As a matter of fact, as God was given the law on the top of Mount Sinai, at the bottom of the mount, the children of Israel were breaking every commandment that God was given. Hello. Oh, but God took a preserved copy, an unbroken copy, and preserved them in the Ark of the Covenant. You know what Jesus said? I didn't come to destroy the law. I come to fulfill it. That Moabite said, man, what happens at that ark of the covenant? What happens at that mercy seat? Oh, the Israelites said, I'm glad you asked. Oh, because we're sinners. And we sin and we fail. And we break that very law that God has given to us. So God has demanded uh, that a sacrifice be made. Amen. And one time a year, we have the day of atonement. And the high priest and the high priest only. He must go and he must, my friend, take two goats. And upon one goat, he is to confess of the sins of the children of Israel upon the head of that goat. And then that live goat is to be taken by the hands of a fit man, fit man into the wilderness far, far away. And I can say Jesus Christ was that fit man. Amen. All of our sins. I said all of our sins. Every bit of our sin was placed upon him. And what did he do with it? He took it far, far away into a land uninhabited. Heaven, amen, to a place where the devil can't find it. Amen. Then that other goat was to be slain. Hello? The innocent was to die for the guilty. And that blood was to be taken, my friend, and applied on the mercy seat. Sprinkled seven times, seven, the number of completion, seven times toward the mercy seat. And if God's, amen, if God accepted the sacrifice, the Shekinah glory of God would come down upon that tabernacle in the wilderness. I can see the Moabite say, man, I sure do wish that I could get into that holy place. I sure do wish I could see that table of showbread. I sure do wish I could see that golden candlestick. I sure do wish I could get past that veil. I sure do wish I could get to that place where the glory of God comes. And the Israelites say, oh no. Oh no, you could never. You could never go in there. Hello. And the Moabites say, well could you go in there? And the Israelites say, oh no. I can't even go in there. Oh, but friend, guess what happened? On the cross of Calvary, the Bible said, yes sir, that on the cross of Calvary, God reached down, amen, as Jesus died, amen, as He hanged between God and man, as He hanged between heaven and earth. Thank God the Bible said that the veil in the temple was rent from top to bottom, amen. Oh yes, you notice your Bible doesn't say that it was rent from the bottom to the top, Oh no, it was rent from the top to the bottom. Demar Dehan in his book on the tabernacle said, you could take two team of oxen, amen, you can tie that ark, I'm sorry, that veil uh, to those oxen and send them in opposite direction and they could not tear that veil. It was an impossibility for that veil to be torn by man's hands. Oh, but my friend God reached down, amen, from the throne of God and He he reached down and the Bible said it was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. Amen. I like it. You know what in twain means? He ripped it in half. He ripped it in the middle. Thank God he didn't rip it on the right because then those on the left could never get in. He didn't rip it on the left because then those on the right couldn't get in. He ripped it in the middle. Amen. You know what that's signifying? That Gentile dogs. Amen. That Israelite. Amen. That red yellow, black, or white. Amen. That poor, that rich, that educated, uneducated. Amen. Even those from Roebuck. Amen. Amen. Thank God can enter in into that beyond the veil. Into the very presence of God. No wonder the writer said, let us, let us draw near. The person to who we are drawing near to. Who is it? Preacher, God Almighty. Listen, I want us to understand the reality tonight that now, well, I like what Paul said. What's well, bad when you get blessed on your own preaching? Amen. 
I like what Paul said over in the book of Ephesians. Chapter number 2, as he's describing amen, Gentile dogs, he says in verse number 11, he said, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles. I like that word remember. I like what the songwriter said. Roll back the curtain of memory now and then. Show me. Where you brought me from and where I could have been. You know that I'm human and humans forget. So remind me, remind me, dear Lord. Paul said, remember, remember. Which reminds me, amen, of an illustration I heard. I don't know if it's a true account or not, but it makes for good preaching. Amen, Brother Taylor. I'm reminded of the illustration I heard a preacher give one time about a little fella, amen, that was poor, that was orphaned. And here he was on the street corner and his clothes were tattered. He had no shoes on his feet. And the king came by, amen, and said, how would you like to be the king's son? Yes. You wonder what he said. He said, absolutely. I'd love to be the king's son. So he put him in his car and he took him to his palace Amen. And he gave him a fresh, gave him a fresh pair of clothing, gave him a fresh pair of shoes, and said, Come and eat at my table anytime you want to. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he noticed after a few months that the little boy, they ate breakfast every morning at eight o'clock. But he noticed after a few months that the little boy was becoming later and later to breakfast. So one morning he said, I want to see what's going on. He sat at the table, 8 o'clock, his son did not come. About 8.30 he said, I'm going to go check on him. And he went up the stairs and he noticed that the door to his son's bedroom was cracked open. And he peeked in and he noticed his son was standing in front of the mirror with those old tattered clothes. Not on, but he was placing them in front of them as he looked in the mirror. And he got those shoes and he was holding them up in the mirror. And big tears were coming down his face. And the king walked in and he said, What's wrong, son? Don't you like to be my son? Don't you like to eat at my table? Don't you like the provisions that I've given to you? And the son said, Oh yes, daddy, I love you. And I'm so thankful that you adopted me into your family. But every once in a while, I just like to get those old clothes out. I just like to get those old shoes out and remember where I was, where you found me. And may I say, thank God, I remember where I was when He found me. I know where I ought to be tonight. I know where I ought to be tonight. But thank God, here I stand behind the pulpit with the King James Bible in my hand, Jesus in my heart, joy in my soul, amen, heaven is my home, God is my king, the Lord is my father, thank God, thank God he said remember that ye he said in time past Gentiles in the flesh Ephesians 2 11 who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands that at that time he said you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. What's he saying? He said you were strangers from the covenants of promise. That's you, that's me. We had no right to the throne of God. We had no right to the things of God. He said you were, you were having no hope and without God in the world. Oh, but I'm so thankful that the chapter does not end there. For he says in verse number 13, But now, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. I used to be a great ways off, Brother Donnie. I used to be so far away from God. Like Adam and Eve when he comes seeking for me. Amen. I hid amongst the trees. Why? Because I had sowed the fig leaves of the works of my hands. And he said that will never do. You must trust the blood. You must trust the blood. You must trust the blood. And when I trusted the blood of the darling Lamb of God, now I have the privilege of drawing near 
near to a holy God. I want you to understand tonight, church, that you and I, because of the blood, can draw near to a holy, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-present, wonderful, glorious, amen, living and true God. Understand this tonight, amen, understand this, that we're not drawing near to a tomb of a dead man. No, no, no. I'm not drawing near to an inanimate object on a shelf somewhere or on my mantle. I'm not bowing down to a fat, bald-headed, green guy. Amen. I'm not bowing down to an inanimate object. But my friend, I have the privilege of drawing near to the true and the living God. Yet you say, how do you know He's living? Because I talked to Him today. I talked to Him this morning. I talked to Him on the way here. Uh, Amen. I feel His presence right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank God. I have the privilege of drawing near. Who am I drawing near to? To a holy God. You see the exhortation? The call? Let us draw near. Huh? The person we are drawing near to. But could I deal with this call? Could I deal secondly with the passion with which we are to draw near? He said, let us draw near. The word draw near literally means to come near or to visit or figuratively to worship or assent to. Could I say this tonight? We usually get close to that that we are passionate about. Can I ask you something tonight, church? How passionate are you concerning you drawing near to Him? Huh? My wife and I will be married 17 years in December. 17 years ago, I could, I could go back a little bit further than that. 18 years ago, there was a long-haired, brown-haired, brown eyes... Dark skin, pretty little girl. Boy, every time I got around to Brother Frankie, my heart got to go, whoo. Huh? <laughs> Hello, Tokyo. <laughs> mm. You know what I want? You know what? I became passionate about her. Yeah. Right. And every time I had an opportunity, I'd get close to her. Hello? We usually draw near to that that we're passionate about. Boy, listen to what the psalmist said. Boy, listen to this verse right here. Psalm, Psalm 27 verse 8. Notice what the psalmist said. When thou says, he's talking about God. When God said, seek ye my face. Did you know God saying that tonight? God said, seek my face. And the psalmist replied back, he said, My heart said unto thee, Thy face, O Lord, will I seek. <laughs> you know, and I mean, I don't have time to preach all this. But a lot of times we're, we are interested in drawing near, or I'm sorry, seeking the hand of God. Why? Because His hand is equated to His provisions. What He gives us. Well, listen to me. I'd have to say this tonight, that the majority of our prayer life has to deal with His provisions. We're seeking His hand. And may I say there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. But do we ever seek His face? I give this illustration at the church and Brother Donnie, Brother Wayne, my little girl Bethany, y'all just be quiet and y'all don't listen to this part. But my other little girl, this is Bethany here, but I've got a smaller daughter, Hannah, Hannah Grace. When she was a baby preacher, you know what she'd do? I don't know about when this started. I guess probably about six, she was about six months or maybe a little older than that. But I'd get her in my arms. You know what she'd do? She'd get her face, her cheek, 
And she'd put it as hard as she could up against my cheek. And she'd just press it up against my, my face, my cheek. Every time, never fail. Every time I healed her, that's what she'd do. You know what she's doing? She's seeking my face. And she wasn't really interested in what I had to give her at that time. She just wanted dad time. She just wanted my affection. She wanted my face. Oh, listen to me. It's preaching time tonight. Oh, hey, 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 hey. How many times do we see the face of God? I'm talking about the passion with which we are to draw near. Let us draw near. Not only do I find the person to whom we are drawing near, the passion with which we are to draw near, but could we deal thirdly with the position with how we are to draw near? He said it in the text back in Hebrews 10. He said, let us draw near with a true heart. With a true heart. This deals with the position with which we are, or with how we are to draw near. I'm afraid many times, listen to me, our prayer life and our, our attempts of, of seeking the face of God and drawing near oftentimes consists of just going through the motions. How many times do we just go through the motions, the religious motions, amen, and listen, we independent, premillennial, fundamental, temperamental, King James only, steps, Baxter singing, pre-tria, premillennial, amen, slobber slinging, amen, foot stomping, amen, yes sir, Cut. biscuit eating, fried chicken eating, Baptist. We get so caught up in our traditions. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I made some of you mad right there and got on your chicken. <laughs> Nanner pudding, amen. We're so caught up with our religious motions. Huh? May I say tonight that many times our public praying is a reflection that there is not a lot of private praying going on. Well, I know that's unpopular, and I know that's not. I know that's not swinging from the chandelier preaching. Oh, but how we need it in this day and hour! How we so desperately need it. He said, "Draw near with a true heart." A true heart denotes sincere, genuine. A heart that's really, my friend, concerned and consumed with seeking Him. Oh God, give us a people again. Amen. Even in 2017, in this materialistic, self-centered society, God, wake up the church and may we get back to the place that we are not consumed with our gadgets, consumed with our toys, consumed with our houses and our our lands and our boots and our cars. May we get back to the place that we are consumed with Him. Oh, young people, young people, please look up here just a minute. 20 years old and 20 years old and down, would you stand up? 20 years old and, and down, stand up, please. Real quickly, real quickly. Oh, what's your name, buddy? Tyler. Sir? Tyler. Tyler. Tyler, this world wants to chew you up and spit you out. Rachel, this world wants to chew you up and spit you out. This world and Satan will use you and abuse you, young people. And he'll offer every little gadget and every little gimmick and every little toy. He'll dangle it out in front of you. You ever notice at the billboards and the commercials that are, that are for immorality and for the booze and for the party lifestyle, they always put attractive people, amen? They always, the, the devil always paints a pretty picture, that's exactly right. He never, he never, he never shows the after effects of sin. And young people, I want to remind you, Tyler, there is pleasure in sin for a season. That season runs real short. Prodigal son didn't stay down there too long enjoying it, did he? Amen. It wasn't long he ended up in the hog lot. It wasn't long that he was so hungry that the, he didn't eat it, but he would have fainted and filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. Oh, Satan, a paint a pretty picture. 
But if I could encourage you young people tonight to do one thing, that's to fall in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. Get as close to Him as you possibly can. Get under the feet of this man of God. Amen. Get on the front row and, and, and egg Him on and say, Preach! Preacher, preach! Preach! Preacher, preach! Have your Bible open. Bless your heart. Don't have a, don't have a cell phone in the house of God. Come in here toting your Bible in your hand up under your arm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, and sit at the feet of the man of God when it's prayer time. Go to the prayer room when it's time to sing. Sing. Yeah, don't just stand there. Sing with everything you have. What are you saying? Get passionate about Jesus. Oh, there's a lie. There's a lie. I'm just going to preach these young people just a minute. You older people, forgive me just a moment. Amen. Am I okay tonight? Amen. There's a lie out there that says, listen, there's a lie out there that says young people can't serve God and young people, are, they're, they're going their own way. They're not interested in the things of God anymore. That's a lie around the pits of hell. You get interested in what you want to get interested in too. Amen. And if you want Jesus, I promise you, He wants you more than you want Him. And He'll always make Himself available unto you. If you'll just seek Him, if you'll just seek Him, I promise you, He will be there. Thank you, young baby. You be seated. What about you, middle agers? Yeah. Huh? What about you, gray haired saints? Right. He said, Let us draw near. I find the call. Let me hurry. I find the confidence. He says, In full assurance of faith. What's he saying? We can draw near with confidence. That means assurance. Why? Why do we have this assurance? Because He's our Father. He's our Father. Is that not what Jesus said in Matthew 6 and verse 9? He said, And when you pray, pray, and after this manner pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven. He said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 11, He said, If ye being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask Him? He's our Father. That's why I have assurance. I thought about this, and I maybe have shared this with you here, but some of you probably have seen this portrait. One of my favorite portraits of the, of the Oval Office is JFK. Now, and I don't know much about his presidency. That was long before I ever came on the scene. Hey, man, I wasn't born until February 13, 1982. Okay, hey, amen. So I don't know much about his presidency. He was a Democrat, so, yeah, well, I better go on. Hey, amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm gonna make I'm gonna quench the spirit sure enough. Amen. One of my favorite pictures is because of the personalness of his picture. JFK is sitting at the desk in the Oval Office. Now, if you look at the desk in there now, the, the front of it is, is all solid. But this particular desk, the, the middle part of it was open. JFK is sitting there on the telephone in the Oval Office, and John John is up under that little hole. <laughs> <laughs> up under the president's legs in the Oval Office. Let me tell you something. I've got a greater office to go yeah. to. <laughs> Oh, yes, sir. May I say that John John probably had special entrance into that place because he was the president's son. Oh, but thank God, my heavenly Father is in glory. And any time, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, amen, 12 months out of the year, 365 days, 24 hours a day, I can go into the presence of my Father, amen. He's my father. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I can draw near in full assurance of faith. Because he's my father and he's faithful. We've seen that last night. That's the confidence. And I'll deal lastly with the cleansing. Notice the last part of the verse. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. And our bodies washed with pure water. What this verse alludes to is to, is to the Old Testament priest. There is a picture here. There is a portrait here. There is a symbolism here. 
the Old Testament priest had to go through various washings before he could ever enter in into the priestly work. I told you that there was a laver provided. And on a regular, during, not just on the Day of Atonement, but during regular daily ministry, the priest had to wash at the laver before they ever entered into the holy place. You can find that in Exodus chapter 30, Leviticus chapter 16. Now what was that laver made out of? It was made out of brass. Brass, I just told you, is a picture of judgment. And this particular brass was to, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, was polished so that when they looked not only into the water, but when they looked into the, into the laver, they saw their reflection. Listen to me, we still have a laver. It's the Word of God. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave Himself for it, that He might wash it and cleanse it by the washing by the water of the Word. That's Ephesians 5.26. Listen to me. What is, what is the writer saying? Let us draw near. Let's get close to God. But let's do it having our hearts sprinkled. Is that what your Bible said? From an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Listen, listen, listen. Contrary to modern Christianity, you don't just run into the presence of God. He's still holy. And there needs to be a cleansing. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? John 13. Boy, I wish I had time to develop that. John chapter 13. The Bible said, Jesus knew that His hour was come. Boy, what a phrase. You know what that hour was. He knew his hour was come. Supper being ended. Bible said he took off his coat. Girded himself with a towel. And he began to get down and wash the disciples' feet. Hang with me now. Hang with me. Don't get nervous. We're not having a foot washing, okay? <laughs> you do that at home, okay? Every, I, somebody said, you believe in foot washing? Yeah, absolutely, every day in the shower. <laughs> he comes to Peter. Peter said, no, Lord. I can't, let, I can't let the Lord wash the servants' feet. Jesus said, Peter, if I don't wash you, you don't have part with me. Yeah, right, right. Get it now, get it, get it. Peter says, not my, not my feet, but my, my head also in my hands. Basically he says, wash me all over. But notice Jesus said, no, no. You've already been washed. Amen. Your feet's just dirty. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, listen to me. You've been saved. You've already been washed. Amen. First Corinthians. And such were some of you, but now are you washed? Right. Well, I've been washed. But walking on this daily walk, my feet get dirty. And I need to visit the laver. Why? Because He wants me to draw near. Amen. There's a God in heaven tonight, church, desiring for you and for me to draw yes. near. Amen. I, I'm almost done, okay? 820. <laughs> I said that last night, didn't I? <laughs> I need for somebody to be the Lord. We'll let preacher be the Lord, okay? Preacher, you go stand down there, okay?
James chapter 4. The writer said to the book of, through the writer James, Draw nigh to God, and He'll draw nigh to you. Verse doesn't end there. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Here's what I find a lot of times, Brother Boone, here's what I find a lot of times in, in the church and even in my own life. God said, draw nigh! Here's what a lot of Christians are saying. I want to get close to God. I want to get close to God. I want to draw near to God. But they never move. I want to get close to God. They get an altar and they say, I want to get close to God. And they leave the same way. They never visit the laver. Are you listening to me? Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Listen to me, this is revival preaching. God has provided the labor right there in your lap, that precious Word of God. God said, draw nigh. You know what he's saying? Every day, visit, every day the priest visited that labor and he saw himself. Isn't that what James said in John chapter 1? Who's, James chapter 1, Whoso looketh in the perfect law of liberty, the Word of God is a mirror, the Word of God is a labor. And as I look in the Word of God, listen to me, and God shows me Jeremy Chisholm and He shows me a rough edge there and He takes the chisel, amen, and He chisels a... It my last name, Chisler, amen. And He takes a chisel and He knocks a rough, edge, a rough edge off here and He knocks a rough edge over here. Listen to me. If you really want to get close, you allow Him to do that. But here's what we say. I want to draw near. And we look into the laver. And God says, that's not pretty. And we say, I don't think it looks that bad. It's not that bad. Lord, have you seen so and so? Have you seen preacher? Have you seen Mrs. Preacher? Have you seen have you seen Rachel? What's your name? Harold, have you seen Harold? I mean, look at him, Lord. <laughs> and God says, I'm looking at you. So you know what I do if I really want to draw? I want to draw near, all right? Lord, that's not right. God, help me to get rid of it. 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 God, I'm making steps for you. God's making big steps to me. Lord, I, help me to get rid of it. God, help me to get rid of it. Help me to get rid of it. Lord, that's not like you. Help me to get rid of it. Hey, 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 hey! Yeah. Draw yeah. not to God! Yeah. Amen. And He will draw not to you. Yes, sir. I believe it with all my heart. Thank you, preacher. If you'll make one little step toward Him... Just one little step toward Him. I believe He'll make giant steps towards you. Oh, you know what I'm praying this week? Hey, God, just to help us make a little step here, and a little step here, and a little step here. And God, help us. Sometimes we might have to crawl. And God, help us. We might have to get on our face before a thrice holy God and say, Lord, everything in my life is not like You. Help me to get rid of it because I really want to draw near. Let us draw near. Amen. That's the exhortation tonight. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Lord, thank you for your precious word. Thank you for speaking to my heart once again. My Lord, sense your presence tonight. I believe with all my heart you're speaking to hearts. 
Oh, Lord, would you help us to respond? May we not just sit idle. Lord, may we not just say, Lord, well, that message was good for so-and-so. Or it was good for that one. But Lord, may we realize it was for me tonight. God, help us to do exactly what this verse says tonight. Help us to draw near. In Jesus' name, heads are bowed, eyes are closed as our sister plays softly. How about it, child of God? God said, seek my face. What is your heart replying back tonight? The psalmist said, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Are you more interested in seeking the hand of God than the face of God? Young person, how passionate are you about seeking God tonight? Would you come to an altar tonight and visit the laver? Would you visit the laver tonight? Child of God, would you come? Several are coming. Christians, would you pray? I've dealt with the Christians, but I, I feel like I need to deal a few moments with those who may be here. This idea of drawing near to God and getting close to Him is, is foreign to you. It's strange. Maybe you have the attitude, well, that's okay for the religious crowd. But I'm, not, I'm just not real religious tonight, preacher. Can I say something? God's not wanting you to be religious. God wants a relationship with you. I wonder if there's one in the building tonight say, preacher, I'm not saved. I'm not born again. I, I don't understand any of this thing that you're talking about tonight, but I know that I need God. Would you pray for me? Would you pray for me? Would you slip up your hand tonight? I wouldn't dare embarrass you. I just want to pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. Preacher. Maybe there's someone else. Preacher, I'm not saved. Would you pray for me? Would you pray for me? I'm not ready to meet God. Would you pray for me? I sense deep Holy Ghost conviction in my heart. I believe God's working. I promise you, I've got two men with me here tonight, my daughter. I don't try to force people. I never try to push an invitation. I, if God's not moving, I don't force it because I feel this way. If, if God can't get you to move, I sure can. And even if I could, it wouldn't do you any good tonight. Are you 100% sure that if you died tonight that you'd be in the presence of God? You might say, well, preacher, nobody can know that. Oh, no, friend. The Word of God tells us we can know. 1 John 5, 13, the writer said, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Paul said, I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Do you know that you know that you know tonight? Are you persuaded? If not, would you, would you slip up your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. Amen, little buddy. I see that hand. Any others? 
several are still praying, you mind God, I'm going to turn the service over to the pastor. What a great message tonight. I like what Brother Jeremy said, if we'll take the little steps, he'll take the big steps. There's some of you not need to take a few little steps. Young people, how about what Brother Jeremy said? Did that strike a note? Did that strike a note with anybody here tonight, young person? Our young people, they don't see the importance of living for God and serving Him as they should. tell you one thing as a pastor I could care less if you ever hit a home run I could care less if you ever scored a touchdown I could care less if you ever went to college I could care less if some of these things you didn't have the opportunity to do that some do but it thrilled this preacher's heart to see you on fire for Jesus well we need some young people to get involved in the work I know you at church. I know you at Sunday school. I know you hear every service. But are you really in? Are you really in? Do you love Jesus with all your heart? We got other things that we like. Mom and dad, grandparents, if you push your children toward anything, you push them toward God. Make their lives count for Jesus. I'm not against those things in young people's lives. I, I had them and, and I enjoyed them and I didn't. But listen, folks, when I got saved at 17 years old, I'm telling you, God made a difference in my life at 17. Brother Jeremy, you got saved at what age? Eight years old. Eleven. I've never had, my, my parents didn't really go to church, but I never had nobody have to try to force me to make me go to church after I got saved. And I'm not saying your parents have to do that to you, but I'm just saying, I came because I wanted to come. I wanted to be here. I wanted to bring my Bible. I didn't have to be bribed when I went to Sunday school. Give me a gold star if I bring my Bible or run my memory verse. And there's nothing wrong with that. But we need some young people. We need some older people with a want to. No matter what everybody else does. No matter what everybody else is want. We want God. We want to experience his, him in our life. We'll wait for just another moment if anybody needs to come. Come. I can't add anything Brother Jeremy's already said. Other than I'll say this. He preached the book to us again tonight. He preached the truth. He preached the word. And if we leave tonight not right with God, it's going to be your own fault. Well, I do appreciate you coming tonight. Appreciate Brother Jeremy being with us. Appreciate our visitors being with us tonight. Thank you for coming. Hope you can come back and be with us again. We'll be back tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. And then also Thursday night and Friday night at 7. And tomorrow, if you'd like to come between at 5 o'clock and 6.30, we'll be having a meal here at the